Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. I have to. I keep forgetting. I have to turn the power switch on here. I always think it's an automatic. Oh. Well, welcome. It's good to see everyone here. Um, it's an exciting day. We get to um, induct a new member, so um, we are happy, happy, happy. To um, to Miss Angie, um, she gave me permission to call her Angie. Um, I want to say welcome to the uh, Rotary Club of Akron. We're part of a team of 1.4 million people um, in 46,000 clubs around the world. We are both an international organization and a local community leader. Together, we lead change in our own backyards and across the world. And I'm Linda Farkas, and I'm honored to be the 2022-23 president of our club. Thanks to everyone for being here today. Angie, welcome to you and your husband, Harry. So they're late people, so we're, we're already good friends. We've bonded. And to our folks online. At this time, if you would please stand for the pledge, I would appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our four way test over here, Angie. Is there a call of concern? Thank you so, so much. Sandy Narragon, she's home from her extended road trip up to New England. So welcome back home, Sandy. Thank you. Please bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for providing us imagination, vision, creativity, and beauty through the talent of artists. Thank you for blessing the rest of us with the ability to appreciate what is created. Continue to guide and call on special people to protect and honor art. Bless the food that we have enjoyed, the hands that prepared it, and the camaraderie we share as Rotarians. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. You may be seated. And our greeter is Karen. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We have uh, several guests today. Uh, Rick Rogers will be our speaker, so he will introduce himself, but he's right back there. No, uh, no not yet. <laughs> I'm introducing you and welcoming you. Um, Adriana Casso is here. She is my guest. And Adriana, um, I have had the uh, wonderful experience of um, being a volunteer at her door number two art studio and actually going to Rome and helping her paint a mural uh, in a city. So I'll let Adriana tell a little bit about door number two. Um, my name is Adriana. And um, I am the director of the door two art studio in Hudson. It's right across the street from the New York. We've been around for about 15 years. And we do a lot of community art. We do a lot of public art. And um, like Karen said, we do it uh, here. We do it a lot in Africa. We do a lot in the international. So we use the visual art and beauty to try and promote hope and empathy and compassion and all of those things to um, show people that there's transformation in their life. So, um, yeah. anything else? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thanks. And Harry Claypool is a guest. You must stand up and introduce. Excuse me. Uh, didn't know who I was going to be speaking. Uh, uh, I'm here to support my wife, uh, who's going to be inducted today. And, uh, I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, everything that I've come from, I've seen so far, everybody's very warm and welcoming, and, uh, and certainly it's appreciated. 
Welcome, we're glad to have you. And we are very lucky to have one of our Rotary Youth Exchange students, Yara Martin Silas. You want to stand up and say hello and say it, tell us how it's going. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Yara, I'm from Spain, Barcelona, and I'm sixteen years old. I don't know, I'm having like a great experience. I'm making a lot of friends and I like my house family, so well thank you for giving me the opportunity. Okay, good. Thank you. It's good to have everyone. We have our district governor elect. Um, I know she's just rolling her eyes. Here we go. <laughs> it's Julie Randall. So uh, welcome, Julie. This is her home club. So we're we're all just excited to have Miss Julie back uh, with her 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 people. Thank you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be with you forever and ever. Oh. All right, a few quick, very quick announcements. David Hall, um, where are you? There you are. I have, um, we missed you, first of all, last Wednesday, but we understood. So those of us that gathered at the food bank, um, we had a great time packaging Starbucks coffee, and it was so hard not to take one of those lovely pound bags and stick it in a back pocket or a purse. So it was it was quite phenomenal. So we worked really hard. So we did 5.728 pounds of coffee. So um, congratulations to our club. And Dave, I will give this to you. And say congratulations, sir. And you can tell us when the next day is. Well, I have to put the calendar in one second. Oh, it's the third tell. Wednesday of November, which will be like the 16th. The 16th. 4 6 30. Right, so we'll do it again. So, those of you that missed, uh, we missed you. Uh, just a quick. Uh, Update on um, Jenny Wino. She's doing better. In fact, she's making so much progress. She's going to be moved to a new facility. Also, on your table, if you take a quick look, there is <clears throat> some information more than you probably want to know about. But it's the A. Z. Baker Award, and um, it was presented. Um, at a district different district conference, Julie, or um, it was presented at the banner. Okay, so um, Steve Bowie, would you uh, would you mosey on up here, please? I have an official letter to give to you. And if you take a look at that information that is in um, on your table, it is it's a packet of questions that we fill out every single year, and in order to receive this award, you have to have um, so many points. And so last year was Steve's year. So I will read this letter. So it says, congratulations, President Steve Bowie and the Akron Club, no, the Rotary Club of Akron. Your club has earned the AZ Baker Award for 21-22 Rotary Year. The coveted award named after A.Z. Baker of the Rotary Club of Cleveland because of his dedication and commitment to reaching out and total service to others. It presented to those clubs that participate in each of the Rotary avenues of service. So 21-22 Rotary year was a year of rebuilding <laughs> following the two years of the pandemic. What made this year great was due to your undying commitment in serving your communities and your fellow members. So it's an honor for your club to receive this award. Under your distinct leadership in 21-22, President, please display the, the enclosed AZ Baker patch with pride. It's a privilege to serve alongside each of you as Rotary District 6630 Governor. I wish you and your club much continued success. Yours in Rotary service, Larry Lohman, District Governor 2122. So. Well, thank you. And here's your patch. We briefly shared it. 
last week. So congratulations to Steve and your year's president. Thank you so very much. Good. Appreciate it. And I would just simply say it's um, it's somewhat easy when you have a mobilized army of servants, and you guys have done that faithfully. So thank you all. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mella, where's Mella? Uh, I don't see her. She's not in here yet. Um, this is the last call for um, candy for the Halloween camp, for Halloween at the Rotary camp. So I didn't see any flyers, but um, if you're willing to donate candy to the camp, oh, there's Miss Mella. Okay, this is the flyer. <laughs> she's She's been a busy gal, so... Um, if you want to donate candy to the camp, um, please see Mella. And then, Mella, I didn't see any of our chili open flyers. Um, no, I mean, we passed them out last week. We have them available. You'll be hearing us. Everybody will be getting something in the mail. So the raffle tickets will be coming. So those are the process. I went to the editor yesterday. I paperwork for the car. So we have a car. Uh, right. Uh, anyway, on for so we're going Buick this year. Right, and this is what the flyer looks like. So, so congratulations, Mella. We'll look for an update again, hun. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, da -da -da -da, let's see. Okay, we have um, a wonderful induction today. And I'm so excited that, that Angie's here. So putting on my president's hat and being a little bit serious, fellow Rotarians, it's uh, the duty of our Akron Rotary Club to add new members from time to time so that we may not only increase our usefulness and influence as a club, but also extend the spirit of Rotary throughout our Akron community. Rotarian Tom Knauer, would you please bring forward your nominee for membership into our club? Angela Claypool. Yeah, don't trip over all the cords. <laughs> don't trip over all the cords. <laughs> so Angela, I have, I'm going to have to try to do this so I can look at you and read at the same time. Um, You've been selected by the members of our club to hold active membership because we believe you to be a worthy representative of your calling and also to possess qualities that will permit you to exemplify the true spirit of Rotary in your public, business, and social and private life. Rotary International is a humanitarian service organization that brings together businesses and professional leaders in order to provide community service, promote integrity, advance goodwill, peace, and understanding in our world. It is a non-political, non-religious organization. Membership is by invitation only. There are over 46,000 member clubs through the world with a membership of 1.4 million individuals in over 200 countries known as Rotarians. When one joins Rotary, you become a part of a worldwide fraternity. You can travel throughout most of the world and find a Rotary club within easy distance. Rotarians will welcome you, even though the language may be different, the food unusual, and the location far from home. When the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the idea of service, as you saw in a four-way test. As the basis of worthy enterprise, and in particular to encourage and foster, first, the development of acquaintance of an opportunity for service. Second, high ethical standards in business and professions the recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations and the dignified life by each Rotarian in your occupation and an opportunity to serve society. Third, the application of service by every Rotarian 
to his or her personal business and our community life. Fourth, the advancement of international understanding. Don't forget, we're international. Goodwill and peace through a world fellowship of business and professional persons united again in the idea of service. I charge you to judge yourself by the rotary four-way test of the things you think, say, and do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill, better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all, all concerned? You have a lot to learn about Rotary, as we all do. It's not just another club, it's a way of life. But you are elected to membership because we believe you fit this way of life. We ask you to hopefully attend the weekly meetings and always remember the Rotary model, service above self. So congratulations, Angela. We welcome you into the organization. And at this very moment, you are the newest Rotarian in the world. So congratulations <laughs> again. <laughs> and on the table, you will find a little synopsis about Angie and her wonderful husband, Harry. And again, welcome, Harry. It's good to have you here with us. So take a moment to look over the little resume of about Angie. And Angie, I will make you part of a very special club called the Women of Rotary. So. Tickle. Thanks very much. Thanks, huh? Congratulations <laughs> again. It's good to have you. Yeah, do you want to say a few words here, Hunter? Hi, everybody. My name is Angie Claypool. Um, first, I want to thank Linda for being so welcoming and kind. I got to meet some of you last week at the food bank, and I really enjoyed that very much. I plan on doing that again and again. Um, and thank you, Tom, for being so kind and answering my many, many, many questions. And, uh, and thank you for sponsoring me for membership. So my husband, Harry, as we said, is here with me today. Um, Harry and I live out at Portage Lakes for about the last seven years. We're both retired. Um, we don't have children, but we have a beautiful little cat named Poppy that we love very much. Um, we live really close to uh, the Rotary Camp, which is a place that I hope to get involved um, with a great deal because I really love the mission and the things they do for the community there. Um, Basically, my whole adult life, I've been a volunteer. Uh, when we moved back in 2005, I started um, volunteering at Pegasus Farm in Hartville. We offer equestrian therapy and other programming for children and adults um, with diverse disabilities. We also have the Military Family Center in Louisville, and there we offer counseling services and other therapies to first responders, active military, veterans, and their families, and all those services are free of charge. Um, so I really felt like the other thing I wanted to mention was when we started that um, Military Family Center, Rotary was instrumental in getting us opened and helping us a great deal. So I started really thinking about the Rotary and unfortunately with COVID it kind of got pushed back a little bit, um, but I really feel like this is going to be a good fit for me. I also know I'm going to get to meet a lot of really great people and I look forward to getting to know you all. Thank you so much. Wow. Oh, we are so excited. Yay. That's done. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce Jerry Kiefer, and she will do the honors of introducing our guest speaker this morning, Rick Rogers. Uh, again, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. And please come back again. You are always welcome. Jerry? 
I'm going to start by saying today is Picasso's birthday, 1881. And if he were around, where he is somewhere anyway, he would say that Rick Rogers is doing a great job for Akron, making Akron an international center for the arts. I just said that. <laughs> That's not on the bio. OK, um, Rick Rogers initiated the curated storefront. He holds an MBA from Ohio State and a BA in biology and chemistry from Hiram College. A consummate entrepreneur with an innate propensity for leadership, Rick began his career in 1980 as founder and president of Tribute, a software company based in Akron. He assumed the leadership of B.W. Rogers Company, a manufacturer and distribution company founded by his grandfather in 1994. And over the course of 20 years, he expanded this family business and led a diverse team. And I want to quote this. It was through his ability to identify talent and cultivate a sense of creativity and independence in his employees that his company was able to thrive and contribute to the economic vitality of his beloved hometown, Akron, Ohio. So Rick, you're there. I'd like to introduce you to talk about Thank you. Um, and thanks uh, to Rotary for inviting me and having me today. I'm really excited to be here and see everybody. Um, and I, before I get started, I want to introduce Liz Gage, who's over in the back, and she's going to try and um, work some magic with our um, audio and vi video. We're trying to jump through some technical hoops here. Uh, we've got a, a video I want to play at the end of my speaking. It could be a challenge, so we'll work through that. But uh, Liz is going to try and make that work. Um, uh, you, some of you may have remembered B.W. Rogers Company. I worked downtown for most of my career from I don't know, 1964, I think were my earliest mem memories, uh, working downtown at Cedar and Water Street. Um, so I have a lot of fond memories of downtown. Uh, I worked at B.W. Rogers Company until 2014 uh, when we sold the, sold the business. Um, and so I, I watched a downtown and Main Street go through a lot of changes. And when I retired, it, uh, it seemed to make sense to, maybe it's an it's a, it's a unachievable goal, but to tr try and take downtown back to some of its former glory. Um, so that's what I've been all about since we started uh, the Curated Storefront, which um, 2017, I applied to the Knight Arts Challenge. We got a grant of $150,000 at that point, and that was seed money to get us started. Um, and uh, Liz, I don't know if you want to see if you can switch me to the next slide here. So what, what we're all about today, we, we started out in some storefronts along Main Street, but we're really about trying to uh, create a cultural ecosystem down along Main Street um, and bring attention to uh, the street edge and bring make, make Akron feel like it's safe downtown where we can bring businesses back and fill up a lot of the, uh, the storefronts that were empty. I think about 70% of the storefronts were unoccupied in 2017 when we counted and um, it felt to me like we needed to um, uh, fill those storefronts. Art made it look comforting and familiar and would attract foot traffic. Um, we also are commissioning public art at the, at the moment. We wanted to expand access to the arts and education and also stimulate economic growth. Um, so the first, I'm going to go through some of the things that we're doing right now. Um, this is a picture of what we have up now at the Polsky building. Um, Liz, I don't know, go to the next, yeah, the storefronts are, are where we started. Uh, we've been in over 20 buildings so far. We have hired over uh, 150 artists. And a lot of that programming has converted uh, buildings into uh, rentable spaces or spaces that have been 
uh, like the Blue Teak Hotel was one of our er very early uh, installations. Uh, we also were in the, the our first one was the corner of um, uh, uh, ex no, excuse me, Market and High in the parking deck front, and that's now uh, acronym Brewery. Uh, we were in there eight months, and um, the brewery moved in. Had been that space had been empty for eight years since the parking deck was built. Um, moving on, I, next next slide, please. Uh, we we've. Um, We've got space in the Bounce Innovation Hub, about 5,000 square feet that we've dedicated to artists. We'll, uh, we'll buy, a, we rent a space and then sub, uh, sublet it in about two to 500 square foot increments to artists, uh, mainly artists that are working on uh, projects with medium like welding and uh, clay uh, that can't be that can't be housed at art uh, summit art space which does have some artist studio space but if you're working in anything with that requires an open flame or heavy tools um, they, it's not permitted in that building it's a county building so we've got I think we've got about uh, six or seven artists right now that we're, we're sub sub uh, letting to at bounce uh, next Uh, about a year and a half ago, we brought uh, some art from a deceased artist's estate to Akron. Um, Clayton Bailey's his name. Uh, he was uh, an artist, I think, with kind of a wicked sense of humor. Uh, he worked in clay, and he also built some of these robots. That uh, that robot you see there was he built. It's a wearable robot um, that. Um, walks around and, and talks and does a lot of other things. But um, uh, we've we put his works, we have about 200 objects from his estate and his, his, um, his overall um, production. Uh, it was in the Landmark Building last year, the ground floor where Crave is right now. And uh, we've we moved out when Crave came in, and we're across the street in the front of the Polsky building. It uh, it seems to attract a lot of um, um, praise from from all ages. We get young kids all the way up to adults that have fun with it. Um, next, we also have started an artist a visiting artist program at the I Promise. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question about sure. The, wearable the what? You said that it was well, that particular robot is uh, is wearable. The one in the picture right there. Um, the artist actually um, created that robot to attract attention to one of his shows. He he did some ceramics, and he built that. He put it on. He walked around outside to promote his shows to bring people into the gallery, and it worked wonders. Um, Actually, uh, Liz was out walking Main Street um, during uh, Akron Pride um, back in August, and hundreds of people came in as a result of it, so it attracts a lot of attention. But it doesn't, I mean, if you want to come down and walk around in it, that's fine. That's a, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hook you up. Yeah. I mean, it's got a little, he, he's got this little mo microphone in it, and you can talk into a speaker. There's all these buttons on in the inside that make things happen. Lights flash and sounds come out of it. So, and he built that. This thing was built in the I think mid 1970s. I was hoping so, that for people with mobility issues, they could put on a pair of pants and then it would help stick. This it, it, he didn't have that in mind when he built it. It was it was a marketing really from it was a marketing piece for him. But um, there. We, I do have um, I do have plans to bring one of the uh, there. I found an artist in New York that has a um, one of those um, Boston Robotics dog robots. I don't know if you've seen those, but she put these um, balls on the feet, and the, the robot goes and dips its feet in paint, and then it goes and dances around on a canvas to create a painting. So I'm 
hoping to bring that to Akron sometime, probably next summer. Um, so we, we got involved with the um, I Promise School about three years ago. And the idea was to bring artists of color to these kids at the I Promise School. And I, did, it, I think everybody knows about I Promise. But they, they bring the lowest um, performing kids in, from second grade to seventh grade. And they, they do test scores on these kids. And um, so they're really some of the most challenged kids in the Akron public school system. And um, I thought it would be appropriate to show them a pathway for success and a way to flourish in life through the arts. And so we've brought uh, black artists in. They come in, spend a week in the classroom. And these are artists that have been very successful in their own careers. And it's a way to get the kids excited about arts as a possible future for them. And we've had some, and there's both um, musical and uh, visual arts uh, people we bring in. Uh, this is, we call this outside the box. We have uh, six shipping containers up on the north side. It's right across from DBA. If you may have seen these things at the corner there, if you go to dinner up, uh, up on the north side. This is, um, so we outfitted these containers with uh, aluminum frames and we can bolt on panels that are created by artists anywhere in the world. And this, this particular piece here is an Italian artist. He goes by the street name of Pita. Um, we also have a, a, a Spanish artist that we brought to town that did some panels back behind it. But um, it's, it's created some attractiveness on the old parking lot up there, um, right, right in front of the bike store. Pixelation. This is a, um, a project that we're working on this year. We just started on it this summer. And the idea is to create a backbone of digital display surfaces up and down Main Street in different windows or locations. And um, uh, we've made arrangements with um, uh, this, this particular piece is from a, um, a gallery in New York City. These are NFTs. I don't know if you heard of electronic, uh, electronically coded images, um, but we've got an uh, arrangement with them where we can bring up uh, uh, all their portfolio of NFT art and we can display it on surfaces around Akron. Um, you can see this particular piece on the corner right now of, or it's actually on the wall of the Civic Theater at night, it's about an eight minute segment that plays, but we will also be connecting other spaces up and, long, up and down Main Street. So you'll see art like this showing up digitally uh, up and down Main Street. So, and we also have collaborated with uh, the Akron Art Museum on this, and we have digital images from the Akron Art Museum's collection that will be presented as part of this project. Uh, next is um, Quaker Galleries. This summer, we uh, collaborated with Front International, which is out of Cleveland. And we took over the Quaker Square Galleries. Um, um, in, we collaborated with the um, University of Akron. Uh, Dr. Gary Miller was very um, uh, supportive of our efforts. He gave us the space at no charge. It was a mess. We had a lot of cleanup to do. We started back in May and literally took truckloads of uh, stuff out that had been in there for it'd been 20 years since those uh, shops, that shops area had been open. And we put in art from international artists in, along with local artists um, and regional artists. Um, and it was, I think, pretty successful. We, I don't know the actual, actual body count, but we think we had maybe 1,000 to 2,000 people come through those studio spaces or the galleries. And they were people not only locally, but from all over Northern Ohio and uh, the US. Go ahead, Liz. Is that art for sale? Yes, it was. It is for sale. I did, did you come through the galleries? I haven't. I didn't know about it. Okay, sorry. But now I do. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we tried to promote. We had some really nice articles in the Beacon. Uh, there were some uh, 
uh, spots. PBS did some uh, spots for us. Um, Security Courthouse, Judge Stormer <coughs> um, started up a program about three years ago and asked us to help with the curation and serve as fiscal agent for them. Um, so we've been programming art in there for the past three years. They also got a Night Arts Challenge grant uh, to help buy art. So we've, we've bought permanent pieces that are in the courthouse and we have had some uh, rotating exhibitions in the courthouse. And the, the philosophy behind this is that, you know, has anybody been in the courthouse uh, before? Or is it, I mean, it's, it's kind of a dingy dark, a dingy dark space. I mean, if some people are there and it's not the best time of their lives. And the idea is to, to how do we brighten this experience up or warm it up to, to end the idea was to bring art in and I think it's been great. We've put a lot of extra lighting in um, and it's a much, uh, much more inviting space than it was before. Um, <clears throat> Calga Falls asked us to serve as an administrator for their National Endowment of the Arts grant they received last year. We've been working that project through the summer. Um, we've been organizing artists and a number of events down along um, Front Street as they've um, installed them. This is a piece by David Jones. Uh, you sh many of you are, are should be a, or maybe are familiar with the Indian that's uh, at the bottom of um, uh, in the valley at the bottom of um, Merriman. Thank you. Yes, um, and uh, this is the same artist. And there's going to be a piece down along the river there in uh, in the falls of his. So here's some of our statistics, uh, 29 spaces that we've ac activated downtown with the windows, uh, over 165 artists that we've hired and we've paid for, 118 exhibits um, uh, were ex uh, installed, and we've had 13 buildings that have converted to some uh, value, commercial value for downtown Akron. Um, <clears throat> And so we've had over 3,000 uh, people participate in art-based activities as well. We have um, uh, interactive educational experiences for people. We do tours downtown. Um, and uh, we've done some live streaming events since we set up Curated Storefront. And um, this is just more of you know, we think we give uh, renters and tenants the idea that empty storefronts a viable option for businesses. This is a quote from uh, Jane Jacobs. She wrote a book called The Birth and Death of the Great American City. Uh, she was kind of single-handedly uh, responsible for uh, protecting the village in New York City in the 1950s uh, when um, uh, I'm trying to think uh, the commissioner at the time wanted to put a big freeway across New York and, and take out uh, the, um, the, the village, but uh, she prevented that from happening. Um, so at any rate, her, her, the, I mean, her basic thesis is that if the, the streets of the city look interesting, the city is going to be interesting. If the streets are dull, the city is dull. And I want Akron to be an interesting city. I want it to be attractive to business development. I don't want it to be attractive for residents to come downtown. And we think that this is uh, one tool in our toolkit that we have to make that happen. Hello, I'm Shirley Smith, President of the Board of Trustees for Curated Storefront. Curated Storefront is transforming Akron into a dynamic urban destination through the arts. Having art be out in the open um, for public consumption, people don't have to pay or intentionally go to a museum to see it, it just brings such a beautiful sort of bridge between community and artists. Curated Storefront is bringing art uh, to, to Akron's people in a way that they can live with it, be with it, uh, enjoy it every day of the week. 
That's the way art should be. It should be part of our daily lives. The mission of Curated Storefront is to bring compelling art to diverse audiences through a dynamic program of installations, events, and exhibits that activate underutilized spaces around downtown Akron. I grew up in Akron, and it's worth supporting Curated Storefront to me because uh, I grew up in a time when there was more foot traffic downtown, my father worked downtown, I could walk downtown from where I lived, and uh, there'd be crowds, people would be smiling, milling around, and Curated Storefront, in a way, brings that back. This is what makes a city somewhere people want to stay and live and someplace people want to be engaged in. We provide Akron artists with opportunities to expand their practices. They directly help artists and give them resources to create work that they normally wouldn't be able to. They incorporate both emerging artists and established artists who are local and international and gives them opportunities to share their artwork with a wide audience that they may perhaps not normally be able to share their work with. Young artists need the kind of support that Curated Storefront is providing them. It provides them support for their work as well as the opportunity to display their work where more people will see it and engage with it. Any opportunity that people have to infuse a city center or an area, a neighborhood, a community with art is just winning on all sides. Since 2016, Curated Storefront has installed over 100 exhibits, mostly storefronts, showcasing local, national, and international artists. We have featured the works of over 150 artists in Akron, driving the creative economy and bringing tourism to downtown. We could see businesses growing, property values increasing, uh, and the downtown regrowing itself. We're already seeing some of that in Akron, and uh, that warms my heart. People from all over are encouraged to come into the, into the city and see this thriving art community that's in Akron. Hi, uh, my name is Ian Burrell. I was really interested in this, this change, this process element, this time-based aspect. And so uh, eventually I found that by doing programmatic work, I could create behaviors that were both audio and or visual, um, in some cases that related together, where all these things, the, these sort of sensorial considerations that I had could be automated and uh, enacted in such a way that they could change over time, just like if I was painting in the process. So by, by being able to actually take the process and describe it in code, it could be a process instead of being a static thing. Please consider making a contribution to our efforts to continue supporting the arts in Akron. If you'd like to learn more about our artists, current exhibits, and how you can get involved, visit curatedstorefront.org today. Questions. Um, I did want to also say that uh, Liz has been our development director and marketing director. She's an Akron U grad. She's done a superb job for us. She has, um, she's moving to North Carolina here shortly. And um, I want, just want to say we're going to miss her, but I also want to say if anybody knows of anybody that would make a good replacement for us for um, our marketing or um, development efforts, I would very much appreciate any, any suggestions. So I'll open it up to questions if anybody has any questions at this point. Yep. So from, well, first of all, from one Ohio State MBA to <coughs> oh, thank you. Doing great work with Ohio State Brown. Thanks. Uh, a question for you though on success. And obviously I think we all buy into mission and realize uh, mission at period of storefront is mobile that's worth undertaking. Uh, how do you quantify success? What does it look like? When will you and your team say, yep, we're done, we've achieved our well, I guess if we if all the storefronts downtown were full of um, successful businesses and commercial enterprises, we'd say, yeah, we did a great job. Um, right now, I'm, you know, if you look at take um, uh, 
Quaker Square, for example. That that building, they're talking. This university is talking about tearing that building down next year if they can't get a uh, somebody to buy it. Um, we've got Cascade Plaza. There's uh, um, Testa just decided they weren't going to develop the hotel. That building's empty. Um, the Huntington Bank building is largely unoccupied. The PNC buildings are are not uh, fully occupied. Um, I, you know, I've got concerns about that whole part of our downtown infrastructure, and I think we need to really look at a strong urban core for the rest of not only Akron but all of Summit County to be successful. So that's part of that would be one of my criteria. The other is what kind of foot traffic do we have downtown? We we have uh, cameras, and we um, I've been talking to the city and downtown Akron partnership to see if we can't. Uh, get some of these, the, um, it's not really trackers, it's not intrusive, but you can get um, uh, apps that will tra tell you how many people are actually where on the street based on cell phone um, signals. Um, so we, we, would, we should know that we're, we're attracting more um, people down, downtown, and I think that's another criteria that, that's important to us. So. Um, those are, and then surveys is another, we've done some surveys in the past, um, but I think that we need, we do need better metrics to determine that, that the city's uh, going in, in the right direction. You know, another thing we're, we're working on right now, just mentioned lock three, there's going to be a garden park there, and um, that should start in, uh, it's going to start in probably in the next two or three months. And it's got a great design. I think that will make a big difference. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. What do you think the next step is? Is it getting more people to live downtown? Will that attract the businesses that the storefronts need to be filled up with? Uh, did the shrinkage of Akron U hurt? I would think it did. I mean, that's what, almost a little more than half of what it was a few years ago. What's the next step to get things going downtown? Any ideas? Um, there's, there's so, I, how much time do you got? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that there are, I think we need to attract more businesses, um, mid to large size businesses to Summit County. Um, that dr drives, I think, commercial growth. I think, um, uh, I think safety is an issue for us downtown. I look at the statistics on crime rates, the murder rates have, have been gradually going up since 2002, 2003, and I think that's a big issue for the city to get its arms around. Um, I think, you know, I don't have any good statistics on this, but does having art help people uh, not, for example, none of our windows were broken when, during the Jalen Walker um, event last summer. But we do have an issue with, with crime that I think is really critical for the city to an address. And I think there's ways to address it. Um, certainly, it may preventing people from getting guns, but I think there's also cultural and behavioral things that, that need to be addressed and it can be addressed in our community. So I, those are a couple. I mean, there's some others, uh, some of the development downtown, you look at downtown Cleveland and Hingetown and the development that's gone on there. Um, uh, Pittsburgh could be a model. Miami, certainly. If you look at the, what the arts have done in Miami, that, that city's growing like a weed right now. And a lot of it's on the back of some really strong arch, arts projects. You, you don't charge buildings. <clears throat> Do we do not. Um, some people say I should, but I think it's, we, I, it's some of the landlords have been resistant to us coming in. Um, they're a little suspect or nervous about having art in their building. Um, some have been really very supportive, um, but we don't charge. We don't charge for the pub. My, my feeling is that this is the most inclusive way for art to exist in the community, that we don't charge for it. I mean, it would, it's a benefit, I remember, to you, that building owners 
Some have embraced us wholeheartedly. Um, some have been much more resistant. And I don't understand some of, some of their attitudes. So I guess some of the building owners aren't as invested in the town and are looking to sell their buildings and it, to them they see it as a nuisance. Um, yes. Um, I've mentioned to the mayor, I've talked to Sean Volman, um, I've had um, uh, James Hardy's been interested, um, Seamus Malik has been interested in some of my ideas, but uh, the mayor, I, I haven't met with him, I probably should make an effort to. Um, because of COVID, all of us have gone to a more virtual format in the way that we work. So the office space that used to be taken up by lawyers doesn't need, they don't need the office, they don't have to take the office space. So has anyone thought about how we can reimagine what we're going to do with those spaces? I mean, as far as the Huntington Bay building goes, um, I think the same thing we're going to think about. Is that where Craig moved in, the first floor? Um, the, they're in the, it's called the Landmark Building, and it is, it's the old, uh, it's, it was a, uh, I can't remember, the First National Bank Building or something like that at background. so. Um, Craig took over that bank space, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing restaurant. Um, and so it's a It is. Well, and I think there has been some of that in some of the people that invested in the, like the law building and the um, old Mayflower Hotel building. They're all they're all New Yorkers that have are coming. They see an opportunity here to invest and reinvigorate the downtown. But uh, we also need to bring, I think, commercial enterprise back into the picture downtown. Well, that my my feeling is uh, uh, Dorothy Lane Market would be great to bring from Dayton. I think they're really a high end market in the old tradition of uh, West Point Market. But anyway, thanks so much. Um, I know with imagination and rotary, we'd like to give you a little rotary so comment much. and a yeah. thank you note. Yeah, thank, thank you thank so you. much, yeah. Rick. And Appreciate thank you it. so much, Liz. Okay, Rick, are we coming for one more thing to pull? Yeah. I'll get to pull the, the, the lucky yeah. winner. Everyone should be on the edge of the seats. All right. Do okay. I get to read it? Or? You do. Sure. It's 788. All right. David? David. You were the proud one. Yeah. We want you to be here. Yeah, it's great. Right. Thank you. 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 Wonderful flyers that Rick left on your table. Please help yourself. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the candy that was in the middle of your table. Happy Halloween. Um, I thought we needed a little pick me up at the end of October. And um, so good to see everyone. And um, I do have a letter from. Um, uh jenny thanking us for flowers that were sent to her um during her stay so there's a letter up here so we want to um jerry be sure and tell your mom thank you for the note so that was very kind so all right anything else that we need to discuss next week just so you know no panic we're going to meet at the other end of the hallway um there's a funeral um that'll be going on here at the church with a procession, I guess they 
walk through here. So just so you know, just take a deep breath. It'll be okay. <laughs> so it's just the other end of the hallway. So no, 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 no crisis here. Okay. So we'll see y'all next week. Um, thanks again for everything. Be safe and take care. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>